the final exercise for all of us together. All right. Number five over here. Okay, without saying too much, I would like you to take a look at the code and tell me what the uh, asymptotic upper bound should be. All right, assuming that you pause the video and try to do the exercise, this one, ultimately, if you are keen to know the answer, ultimately, the answer will be big O of n squared. All right. However, I think this part is really that's what's really worth our attention because this one is really go, uh, in order to really calculate the correct answer, we really need some knowledge about the formula for arithmetic sequence. Let me uh, the sum for the arithmetic sequence. There will be another formula for calculating the sum for geometric sequence, which is also relevant, but I will talk about it when we need to use it. So we always try to be just in time. Okay, let me uh, tell you what the formula is, and then uh, maybe you can pause the video again to see why it will be relevant to calculating the running time for this particular algorithm. Okay, so the sum of arithmetic sequence okay, over here, in that case, when we say uh, you got some a plus, okay, let me just start with this. I'm going to start with the obvious one and I'll give you a more general one. If you got 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus all the way to and let's say n, right? It will be the beginning plus the end, the beginning plus the end, 1 plus n multiplied by number of turns, which would be n turns. All right, just n turns, sorry just n turns and divided by 2. That's the formula, right? A little bit more general form goes like this. If I have something like, let's say, um, so let's say the initial turn is simply just i. That's the initial turn. Plus some some constant uh, increments, right? That's, a, uh, that's really how we see the pattern for arithmetic sequence. i plus c plus i plus two, uh, 2c and plus i plus and 3c, right? You can see the first uh, four terms. Initial term, initial, in, uh, initial term plus some constant increments and then plus another constant increment plus another constant increment. You can see the difference between this and this is actually c, right? Just more general form. From here to here, it's a plus c. From here to here is also plus c. From here to here is also plus c. Over here, okay? And then, let's say we got n turns in total. Plus, all the way to i plus n minus 1 multiplied by c. Okay? And why n minus 1? Because we start with i. You can think about the i over here is, i over here is really i plus zero times c, right? So now you go from zero all the way to n minus one, like array indices, right? So that'll be n turns, okay? And what will be the sum of this particular series? It will be just equal to the beginning term plus the n term. So that'll be i plus i plus n minus one times c, okay? And multiply by n, the number of turns, divided by two, that'll be the formula, okay? So now if you look at that, beginning term, and also the end term over here, multiply by n, divided by two, right? It's, I'm just trying to show you the formula so you get some feeling about what you used to know, all right? And you might need to uh, use either one of them when you talk about arithmetic sequence, right? So let me put it here. I think uh, we definitely revisit uh, this formula again, because this formula is actually very common whenever you want to calculate uh, the running time. Okay, okay. So these two. Okay, review them. If you got any trouble, uh, re, uh, like a re, uh, like a recalling them, let me know. Let's now take a look at the algorithm itself. And let's uh, again go line by line. This line over here is going to be big O of one, obvious. And let's be careful about the loop. This one over here, how many times? Well, it's actually going to be, uh, well, some, somewhere very close to n over here, right? Like a, er, like the earlier example. 
big O of n. However, you can see this one over here doesn't seem to be as easy as before. Um, you can somehow argue that, well, since we say j is assigned to i, and then we're going towards uh, n, so it should be somewhere close to n, so you just put big O of n. That may not be the very good way to go. I really want to see your analysis as close to uh, the actual pattern as possible, right? Let's just uh, make a note over here. So my point is to really see exactly how many times to see the iteration pattern. This example here is not is definitely way uh, it's definitely more complicated than what we have uh, what we saw earlier, right? Like uh, the earlier example. That's that's what, that's why I want to talk about this in the last. Before that, let me just say one more thing. You can also take a look at the uh, over here inside the loop over here. It's a big old one, right? It's a uh, arithmetic and also array indexing, and finally. You can see this part over here about the return outside the loop is such a big old one. Okay, let's now make a notes. And what I would suggest, whenever you got like a tricky pattern about the loop counter over here, try to make some abstract trace table focusing on loop counters. What do I mean? Let's take a look. If you look at the outer loop, I'm going to use the pink. The number is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, up to n minus 1. Because when i is equal to n, you will get n less than n, which will be false, in which case we don't really execute the iteration, right? So let's think about the pattern. i is actually going to be 0, 1, 2, all the way to n minus 1, right? Because we got strictly less than n. So this part here, it should be very good, okay? And for each value of i, j is actually going to start with i and then go all the way to n minus 1. More precisely, in the case where i is equal to 0, j is actually going to be from i all the way to n minus 1. Agree? And also, when i is equal to 2, when we get to the inner loop the second time, so now j is going to be i. So j is going to start from 1 and all the way to n minus 1. You might just be able to see why this could be relevant to our arithmetic sequence over here, right? Let me just do uh, more. And then uh, for i is equal to uh, 2. In that case, we're hitting the inner loop uh, the third time. In that case, it's going to start with uh, 2 over here and all the way to n minus 1. Okay, what about the final iteration? Where i is equal to n minus 1, uh, j is actually going to be i, so it's going to be starting from just n minus 1 over here, right? Only one iteration, okay? The pink part over here is just about the outer loop, okay? So let me just try to give you a little bit more uh, annotation over here because you might see something similar later. First dimension is about the, fir uh, the uh, first loop counter, the outer, lo uh, outer loop. So this is the outer loop. Okay, and then each row in orange, for example, this row over here is about when we hit this particular inner loop, when i is equal to zero, this is about the ma uh, this many iterations that we have to execute for this particular inner loop. Similarly, when i is equal to one and we hit the inner loop, this will represent the number of iterations that we need to execute for the inner loop and etc. Okay, let me just uh, highlight just for one particular row. Right, it's important to be clear. So this part over here, oh, actually, sorry, just this part over here. It's about the, iter, uh, the inner loop. This is about the inner loop when i is equal to 0 over here, right? When we hit the inner loop and i is actually equal to 0, this is about the disbanding. Uh, iteration that we have to execute. What about each execution? Uh, what about each iteration for the inner loop? Well, uh, let's say when j is equal to 0, that will be the first iteration, second iteration, all the way to when j is equal to n minus 1. All of them are iterations for the inner loop. And for each iteration, we're going to execute this line, which is bigger of 1. Right? That's something also very important to note. Just 1, and also 1, and also 1. Okay. Not necessarily every time when you see the inner loop, it will just be constant time operation. It might be just another uh, nested loop. It's possible, right? All right. 
Finally, let's now derive the formula for the running time for this uh, algorithm over here. But I just need to make a little bit of space for myself, if you don't mind. Give me just a few seconds over here, okay? I will just move this uh, formula just a little bit to the left. And I'll make it a little bit smaller. So we definitely got space for the final derivation. Okay, let's put it here. Okay, that should be good. All right, and then I'm going to put my final answer. Actually, let me just uh, like that. Okay, the final answer, I'm going to put it uh, on the right to the purple line. Okay, let's now derive the final answer. Okay, it's going to be a big O off over here. Let's think about what's going to happen over here, right? In some way, you can see all the pattern over here we, are, uh, we, are, we have derived over here tells us exactly how to do the multiplication, right? We got this many iterations for the outer loop. And then for each one of them, we got this many iterations for the inner loop over here. And then for each one of them, for each iteration for the inner loop, we know that we're only executing this line over here that will be constant. Right? Of course, we got the beginning and also the end, some constant operation, right? Let's write those down first. So that means we got uh, the one plus one over here. So one plus one, well, ultimately they will be dropped anyway because they are lower term, but it's good to be complete. One plus one, okay? And then what we should do is thinking this way, okay? When i is equal to zero, and this will be the uh, this will be the number of iteration that we have to uh, execute for the inner loop. How many of them? We got. We go from j is equal to zero all the way until n minus one. So that means we got n, right? We go from zero all the way to n minus one. And there's, there will be some a little formula I want to mention to you. Okay, when we talk about calculating for intervals of numbers, if I want to see how many numbers, uh, let me put it here. How many numbers in the inclusive intervals on both ends? For example, right? That's uh, what you in calculus. If you got square brackets, that be, that means inclusive. If I want to go from a to b, right? In that case, it would just be b minus a plus one. A very simple double check. From one to ten, ten numbers, obviously. 10 minus 1, 9 plus 1, that'll be 10. So that's a formula, right? You can dump, you can, if you understand it, you can just use it. Okay. So now we go from 0 to n minus 1. How many, how many iterations do we have for the inner loop? We got n minus 1 minus 0 plus 1. So that'll be n. So for when i is equal to, uh, I'll try to annotate for you. Okay. So let me just go back to. So when i is equal to zero, we got n iterations. And then every iterations, we actually got uh, just execute the purple line over here, right? The sum, okay, right? Multiply by one, okay? And just to annotate over here, the n over here is actually when i is actually equal to zero. All right, hopefully that's uh, complete for you. All right, what about the next one? The next one will be, we actually got uh, the second row over here. We go from one to n minus one, right? How many numbers? n minus one number. So n minus one iterations for the inner loop and for every iteration is gonna be multiplied by one. We're executing this line again, constant time operation. And one more annotation over here. This is actually when i is equal to one right over here right you can go with this pattern over here but you can see what we're having is we're going to get n n plus one and all the way down to what about the final iteration let's see the final iteration the final iteration is going to be uh only just uh when only uh for the value for when j is assigned to n minus one, the i's value, then we we can still satisfy this, but when it's incremented from n minus one to n, we cannot execute anymore. So there's, there's only one iteration, right? So those, there's only one, right? Notice that this is only one, plus one, and 
every iteration, including a single one, just execute this line. So multiply by one. All right. That's uh, very, very complete. And for absolute completeness, this one over here is actually when i is equal to n minus one. All right. And obviously, we can factor out the one over here. The reason that I still want to factor it out that seems a little silly mathematically. But I want to do this just to show, show you that later on, you might have an algorithm where the body of the uh, inner loop may not be constant. So that's why you got to be careful. All right, let's now try to go further. So big O of n, n plus one, uh, sorry, one plus one would just be two, obviously. And then we have factor out. So plus one times, and this part over here, obviously is an arithmetic sequence uh, going backwards. n, n minus one all the way to one. So it's going to be n, n minus one plus all the way to one, right? And that's uh, the intermediate calculation. Let's now do one more uh, uh, simplification. So you can, it's going to be big O of, and let's uh, look at the most important part. This is arithmetic sequence. According to our formula, it's going to be like this, right? It's just uh, written backwards. So it's going to be uh, over here, uh, two plus, and let's now, Forget about this uh, multiplicative constant because it's just one. And then it's going to be the beginning term plus the end term over here. Another way for you to think about it is here, the constant increments from one to another is simply just minus one. N plus minus one will be N minus one. N minus one plus another minus one will be N minus two. And we go down to one. That's another way for you to think about it. Okay. So the beginning term uh, sorry, begin, uh, beginning term plus the end term multiplied by how many terms? We got n terms exactly divided by 2, right? Okay, and now I can do a little bit of simplification more quickly. We know that n times n is going to be n squared, right? Everything else would be, uh, that, that's guaranteed to be the highest term as we can judge over here. And then everything else will, will either be lower term or multiplicative constant. So we'll, we only got n squared. So you can do me, uh, you can do the exercise to really simplify this to be the precise term if you need it. And then you can derive the big O. But I can tell you it's going to be big O of n squared over here. Because once we see that, you can see the n here and also n here, it's going to be n squared. So that'll be the ultimate answer. Okay. It's quite a bit of derivation over here, but I think the most important takeaway for this example here is about how to analyze the loop counter pattern, i and j over here, and this particular table over here. It's really, really important for you to understand. Okay, And then to really understand how this running time over here is corresponds to uh, the arithmetic sequence. And you can see it's really interesting. This part here is purely math. This part over here is purely Java. And now we are trying to connect the two worlds to really make some meaningful analysis so we can judge about the uh, running time efficiency for the algorithm. All right, so that's the uh, final exercise uh, that I want to go over with you. If you go back here, you can see the answer for each one of them. Of course, in the slides, I only included conclusion and some uh, hints about how you can calculate. But you want, if you want to see the complete details, refer to what I just illustrated on the iPad, Okay, as usual. All right, example one, two, three, four, five, and we are done. All right. And this uh, final slide here, just to say beyond this lecture here, that's what I mentioned in the very beginning of this lecture, this course assumes proficient Java. So you want to make sure you really catch up in the very first three weeks when we don't have that many uh, uh, assignments or written tests coming. So you want to make sure you catch up with uh, any Java programming. I'll rely on you on that. Otherwise, you may just uh, suffer for your programming tests or your programming assignments. All right, we're done with uh, this first lecture here, and then we're going to move on to the second one.